<laughs> Trying to be respectful. Well, Jared, I mean, this was, uh, this was always a big fight from the moment it got announced, right? But now, co-main event, a pay-per-view, I mean, big time. I, I don't know, does this have a special feel about it? Yes, it does, definitely. Uh, super excited. Eyes are on us. And I think, um, you know, I think we are the, uh, the true main event right now. You know, not, not to take anything away from the, the main event, but, uh, you know, those guys are really stoic. And, uh, you know, I'm not the, the most charismatic person at times, but, you know, Patty sure is. And uh, I think it's going to be a great fight. Super excited. Can't wait to get in there. What do you make of that? I mean, I would say he's a charismatic dude, right? He brings a lot of attention. You, you kind of blue collar grinding in the shadows or whatever. So, I mean, what do you think facing a guy like this, boisterous like this? I think it's great, man. I think he's great for the sport. Uh, I like him. I liked him from the start. Even before UFC, when he was in Cage Warriors, and um, you know, to get a chance to get in there with someone like him, you know, I put myself right in this position to be in this moment. Everything that I did, I walked left, I walked right, I lost, I won, and it led me right here. So um, it's just an opportunity that I have to seize, just like anything else in life, and that's what I'm going to do. Have you felt like a responsibility, I guess, to maybe come out of your shell a little bit or whatever, or to kind of be a little more out there in this role, in this fight? Uh, not necessarily. People don't really know me that well, I don't think. Um, if you, like, hung out with me for a couple hours, you'd be like, this is not who, uh, you know, we think he is. But, you know, I have a responsibility to, you know, set a good example, I think. So, but... You know, I could be fun, too. Personality aside, uh, what do you make of Patty as a, as a martial artist? I mean, like, there seems to be some debate. It's just how good he really is. Knowing that you've been watching him since his Cage Warriors days, what do you make of him as a martial artist? Uh, I think he's dangerous. I think he's uh, unpredictable. And I think that he's got a lot of tricks up his sleeves. And he's a good grappler, and uh, that was his base. But he goes for it standing. He kicks. He th flying knees. He, you know, big punches. Uh, and this is MMA, you know, this isn't boxing, this isn't, um, you know, kickboxing. There's so many variables that, you know, I'll spar with amateurs and I'm like, why am I getting my ass kicked right now? So I'm looking at it like this is the best fighter that I've ever fought and I'm not looking past him whatsoever. Do you think his grappling stacks up with the guys you've just faced? I mean, you faced a couple high-level grapplers in a row. I mean, listen... He's tricky. He does more like, you know, dynamic movements, like flying arm bars, flying triangles. Uh, he takes the back really well also. Um, do I think he's necessarily as solid as a grappler as, say, Grant Austin or Joe Selecki? I don't know. I guess I'll find out <laughs> Saturday night. Uh, but I'm ready for it. And, uh, you know, people, like, I'm not subbing guys constantly, so people are like, oh, he's, you know, he's just a positional guy, but, like, you know, I think that my grappling is up there with all those guys. So, you know, fight's a fight, and I just got to be the man that shows up that night. Last thing for me, you know, a big win for you here. I'm just curious where you think this puts you, right? Because it's not really about, like, a ranking or a position, but it's obviously a huge opportunity and a lot of eyeballs. So where do you see yourself going with the victory here? I think it gets me a shot at the top 15, at least, you know. Um, but you know how this sport is, man. One, look, I mean, three fights and you're champion. Like, look at uh, Jiri, right? He had three fights, right, or four fights, and he was – so, like, you know, who's to say? Who's really making those rankings anyways? You know, so uh, I'm not really worried about that, but obviously I want to climb the ladder, and, you know, that's what I'm going to do. Jared, to your right, um, if that I hung out with you for a day, what would I find out? Oh, God. <laughs> Do you really want me to tell you? No. Um, <laughs> nah, man. I don't want to go there. But, um, you know, I, have, I had a whole other life, you know, before I was trying to be an example for people. So I lived in a way that was, you know, not necessarily the, uh, the most holy or godly way. But, uh, yeah, man, you know, I come from uh, New York. My mother's Catholic Sicilian. My father's an an English Jew. My grandparents were born and raised in London, just for all the 
Brits out there. You know, I'm, I'm half Brit. So, uh, you know, the, uh, the household, the way we spoke, you know, I've been cursing since I'm like three years old. So you, you could, you know, use your imagination, you know, and uh, it's, it's fun. <laughs> we have fun. I wonder what, you know, he got a lot of attention for that speech he made after the last fight, and I thought of you when he was talking about that, because you've done a lot of stuff like that. And have you ever wondered why maybe you haven't taken off the way he did after that? He had that thing and kind of just blew up and gets a co-main event, and, you know, you're kind of uh, still, you know, fighting that battle, right? Uh, I mean, I wonder a lot of things, you know? Um, but this is, yeah, well, I know why. Because I'm from America, and he's from Liverpool, and he has a whole city behind him, right? And uh, the Americans, or Americans, like to tear down their athletes, you know? And uh, there's so many of us in the UFC, so who are they going to get behind? You know what I mean? You see guys come from different countries. Look at Connor. The guy had a country behind him. Khabib. He's got, all, he's got Russia behind him. You know, oh, you're from New York? Go F yourself, you know? <laughs> And that's like the, that's like the saying, and, you know, you walk down the street in New York and it's like, hey, uh, fuck you. You're like, yeah, fuck you too. You know, it's just like how we are. So, uh, but as Americans in general, it's like, let's tear our athletes down instead of support them. Oh, I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, I, I was just saying, you know, New York is bigger than Liverpool. Yeah, but that's, uh, that's a problem in itself. Who's Jared Gordon? You know, how many people are from New York? So, you know, like, I assume the fact that, you know, he has had so much hype behind him made it more attractive to you when the fight was, you know, announced because now you have a guy that a lot of people are going to tune in to see and that puts you in the spotlight that way. Do you, do you look at it that, like that and that you, maybe you beat him, you take some of his shine? Yeah, I mean, I got to I gotta go in there and do what I got to do. Like, uh, you know, perfect example, right? Uh, Masvidal versus Darren Till, you know? And look what happened to Mas. Uh, it seemed like you know they were going towards. All right, let's, this is Till's night, and then Masvidal did what he did, and there and then it was like all right, let's take let's make him into a superstar now. So yeah, that's that's what I have to do, um, and that's what's going to happen. So, you know, you referenced, you know, you don't want to go there when you talked about your personal life and everything. But if you become that superstar, right, that's going to put that kind of pressure on you, the spotlight, and you're going to have the cameras following you around and you get a lot more. You know, are you mentally prepared to deal with all that stuff that if you get to the absolute top level and you're another Connor or, you know, somebody in, nobody's another Connor, but in that kind of ilk, do you think that would be a hard thing for you to deal with? No, I don't think so. I'll always stay true to myself. And, you know, as long as I uh, walk with my God, then that's all that I have to do, you know? And I'm not doing this for that. I mean, yes, I make a living doing this, and it's always nice to make more money and, and uh, obtain material things. But, you know, I already sold myself to the devil, and I got it back. And I'll never, I'll never go back to that life ever again. Jared. And Jared, right here. Um, Kevin mentioned Patty's post-fight speech about mental health, and I know that's something that's been important to you. You even, in October, I believe, you did an interview where you were saying you would like to maybe do something with Patty after the fight. He just announced that he launched a charity. Um, I don't know if you saw that, but is, do you feel like maybe you guys have more in common that, in that department than meets the eye, and would you like to maybe help him out with that going forward? Yeah, of course. I mean, I, I had said that for that reason. Like, maybe we could do something together. Nothing came of it, um, but that doesn't mean something can't happen in the future. And, you know, I think that even post or pre-UFC, I remember hearing him on the, how, uh, the MMA Hour or whatever he calls his show now, um, that he was, you know, dealt with mental health issues and stuff like that. And, and I was like, oh, like, and that's when I started, like, kind of liking him. Um, but, yeah, I think that with the support, you know, that we both have and the people that are around us that we could do something and, and why not, right? You know, and we can entertain people in the process. And do you think you guys both prove maybe, like, I feel like there was this, um, this thought at one point in time that, like, negativity was the thing that could promote fights and get people talking about your post-fight interview. But do you feel like maybe you guys are just proving that with the messages you're sending? Yeah, I mean, listen... I see guys all the time, you know, 
saying certain things to each other, certain, using certain words, uh, you know, being like tough guys. And it was like, if you were really a criminal, then you, would, you wouldn't be here. You would be out there extorting people and selling drugs and killing people. Um, and, you know, I hear people call each other certain words, and it's like, where I've been and from where I'm from, those words, you know, those aren't fist fighting words. Those are, I'm going to stab you in your back when you're not watching words, you know. But you could tell people haven't been, certain people haven't been to jail. Even, you know, some of our superstars, they've never been to jail. They've never shared a cell with someone else that they don't know who comes from, a, you know, a terrible place. Um, so, yeah, that whole, you know, the crap talk, I get it. You know, someone says something wrong to me, I'm not just going to roll over, you know. Uh, but, yeah, I think, you know, this, this is, I know I sound like a broken record, but I'm going to try to preach, you know, mental health and addiction stuff. And, you know, that's just where, that's where I'm at in life now. So, no problem. Jared. Um, were you surprised about the backlash that you got when you said that MMA doesn't fulfill you? Oh, yeah, dude. It went right over so many heads, you know, and it was like, you guys really are stupid. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I'll win a fight every time I fight. Oh, this is my biggest fight. And then I win. And three days later, I'm like, well, now what do I do? You know, and I'm like miserable again. You know, now I'm starting to act out because, like, I don't know where to put my energy. You know, and that's what used to lead me to, like, shooting heroin, you know, uh, or, like, doing something insane. So, like, you know, the only thing that gives me that, you know, for the millionth time that I said this is God, my, my wife, my parents, my friends, when I get to spend time with people, help people, that's what gives me lasting fulfillment. No matter what I do, MMA will never make me whole. And I'm going to retire. And what am I going to do when I'm 50 years old? People ask me, oh, what do you do? Oh, I'm an MMA fighter? No, you're not. No, you're not. What are you talking about? So, uh, you know, you just, like, some, you just can't put your value into something that's, like, not going to last forever, you know? So. You're in the back, Jared. Uh, as the spotlight continues to grow for you, we know you're able to put an emphasis on your outside of the octagon purposes. Do you feel like with a fight of this magnitude, you've been able to put even more of a spotlight towards the addiction, towards the mental health, and you've had those opportunities? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, my DMs are, are filled. I can't even... Be, I need people to actually help me go through them. I can't do it myself. Um, and yeah, that's the whole point, right? If uh, LeBron James was talking about mental health, he would get a lot of listeners, right? If Conor McGregor was talking about mental health, instead of flexing in the mirror, on, he would get a lot of listeners, right? But, uh, you know, whatever floats your boat. And right now, do you have a, a direct focus, purpose, which way you want to uh, take your journey as far as helping people or could you tell us more about it? Yeah, I mean, right now I do work with a, a center um, for treatment, uh, addiction treatment. But, uh, you know, the goal is to open my own. I would like to do something for athletes um, <clears throat> and um, provide more of a holistic approach. Sometimes you need to, you, you, I mean, you have to use traditional modalities for treatment detox, you know, certain drugs that need to be used for people, otherwise, you know, they could die or, you know, have other health issues. So, uh, but yeah, that's where I want to go. That's what I want to do. It's super hard nowadays, you know, the, a lot of things are changing with insurance companies and, you know, self-pay for treatment centers is really expensive. Uh, but yeah, that's like something I definitely want to do. Uh, and I'm sure other things as well, as far as, you know, I, I help people for free all the time. And that's, like, what I've been doing for years. Uh, so, like, I'm not trying to, like, I have to, I have to toe the line of am I doing this for, for personal gain and money or am I doing this because I really want to help people? Uh, but I speak to certain people and they give me the answers that I need uh, when it comes to stuff like that and, and I'll figure it out. Thank you. No problem.